And what's the deal with hard drives? I mean, you don't drive anywhere in them. The hardest thing about them is you buy a thousand gigabyte drive, put it in your computer, and you got 931 gigabytes. I mean, what were they shaving in there? Now, I'm sure you guys have seen this before, and the discrepancy is caused by the fact that there are actually two different ways of representing amounts of data. Decimal, or base 10, is the more conventional way of representing these numbers, but with the advent of modern computing, binary, or base 2, has sprung up. Now, back when data sizes were much smaller, an approximate equivalency was drawn between a decimal kilobyte, that is a thousand bytes, and a binary kibibyte, which is 1024 bytes. Sure, why not? It's all good. Well, in their defense, the difference was only a couple percent, so it didn't matter. This led to many cases of the incorrect use of prefixes. But if this has been going on for years, why are we suddenly noticing it now? Well, customers never really cared when their 16 megabyte thumb drives showed up as 15 megabytes and change. You chalked it up to inefficiencies in the formatting or rounding errors. But check out this chart right here. This shows how much smaller your drive will be if the manufacturer is calculating in decimal and the software is calculating in binary. The difference becomes greater and greater as capacities continue to increase. To make matters worse, your hard drive is manufactured and reported in decimal capacities, but many operating systems report the capacity in decimal, but are actually calculating it in binary. And what that means is that that one terabyte drive that Jerry Linus was talking about at the beginning actually is exactly what it says it is. It's a thousand gigabytes, but it's being reported as 931 gigabytes. And I think we can all agree that 1,000 gigabytes does not equal 931 gigabytes. So there have been product returns. Thanks for that. There have even been lawsuits about this, but the reality of it is there's not much you can do about it. And once you look into it, you'll find there are many discrepancies. Some where you're getting less than you thought, some like computer memory where you're actually getting more than you thought you were. This contrasts sharply with audible.com where you get exactly what you thought you were going to get. In fact, head over to audible.com slash techquickie right now. You can get yourself a free audiobook. I listen to them when I'm falling asleep. These headphones are great. They actually stay in while I'm sleeping, so it acts as noise cancellation for me as well. And right now, I am trying the first Twilight book, which I can tell you guys so far is definitely helping me fall asleep. But if you're not into Twilight, don't worry. There's thousands of other options on audible.com, and the first one is free. It always is. So head over to audible.com slash techwiki right now to check it out and learn more. And as always, guys, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to TechWiki for more fast as possible episodes just like this one.